Welcome to 7 and Dance Tips for every Chlorian main. You have probably heard a thousand times how to build and play her, and at least a million times that her optimal combo is to use 3 normals into a skill. If you haven't, check out my full guide. Otherwise, let's talk about that combo. If you're pushing 3 normals into skill to its maximum potential, you should know that it's very achievable to perform it 6 times and end up with one extra normal attack in the end. Things change if you start with your burst. Doing so will want you to press your skill twice, since you already have a 100% bond of life. And a good execution of skill plus skill into normals is 6 times and 3 e And by the way, this combo is better when your burst is at least level 7, since the bond of life goes up with levels and it's more than 100% at that level and beyond. Her attacks also share a detail with the likes of Ayato. You don't have to spam click, you can just hold your attack button and she will continue attacking. And to add to this, you don't have to release the attack button to perform your skill. You can just keep holding it and press skill every 3 attacks. Of course, when you press your skill, you have to be close to the enemy to actually hit. So a good way that I found very comfortable to play with, that doesn't compromise on your combo, is to hold both forward movement and the attack button. Doing so will need just 2 inputs from you. Pressing your skill when you need to, and rotating the camera towards where you want to be. Making everything just much easier. I will get into mobile and controller in a second, but for PC users, doing this will give you full control of your movement and override the auto-targeting system, at least for the skill. This enables you to move wherever you want, so if you want to use it just to avoid an attack, you will be able to do so. Of course, it is just a movement and it's not a real dodge, so you can still take damage if you get hit, but at least you won't be staggered. Another note that I have on this is that if you hold her attack button, she will not start attacking right away after being interrupted, needing you to repress it. I double checked on controller and mobile and all the things I just said apply there as well. Although for mobile users it's preferable to release your attack button between skill uses so that you can still just use 2 thumbs to play. So you would hold it for 3 attacks, release for skill and go hold again. Both on mobile and controller you can use the movement key just to decide where to dash or not touch it at all if you feel like the auto-targeting system will do it right for you. Let's talk about her burst now because I don't want you guys to be stuck on one rotation only. It's not a must to use Clorence burst at the start of it. Yes, it allows for a combo that starts with a double skill, but there are a few things you can achieve if you instead split a rotation. In a sense, she's very similar to a Lightem because he also has a similar playstyle. You can, for example, apply your buffs and elements on wave number 1, defeat it with just a burst and then reapply your buffs and elements on wave 2. Now you can use Clorence's skill for her on-field window. Clorence's burst plus full rotation takes around 10 seconds, so generally most buffs will cover almost all of it. For reference, very decent the nearer lasts 10 seconds, but you have to take into account switching and rotations and the fact that some other buffs don't last that long. Noblesse and Instructors are 8 seconds, Sarah's attack buff is 6 seconds for example. Additionally, using the burst at the start means it won't enjoy the full 20% clear rate bonus of her Ascension 4. But these are very minor adjustments that however can have a great impact if you struggle to finish a chamber in a certain time, whether this is on someone that barely clears or if you're trying to speedrun it. Another important part of Clorence's kit is her bond of life and healing. Healing influences the way you attack, in more ways than you think. This is an example that happened while I was testing her. I set up my team and used Baishu's skill followed by his burst. I go to Clorand and cast my burst. It gives me the bond of life, but I also lose some of it. And that's because Baishu's healing happens during the burst. Healing done to Clorand increases the bond of life, but only during her skill. Let's change the order of Baishu's cast so that I get healed after the burst and during my skill. This is very precise, but I managed to make the heal increase my bond so that I can start casting Impale Knight, the skill, and then go for a normal combo. But of course, these are hard to plan. And in case you don't have to cast her burst, you can also use all that extra healing that you get all at once to avoid going up to 3 normals and instead get away with 2. This is not just for Baiju, but it was perfect to prove this point. Extreme amounts of healing can change your combo and make it even be a repeating 2 normals into skill, instead of 3. And that is exactly what exploded on the CN community where a video, and then a few more, went viral. And that was a Skyward Blade Clorend with Furina and Chichi. 
Skyward Blade will do physical damage triggers, increase their attack speed, Furina will increase overall damage and healing bonus, and Chi Chi has some of the most insane healing in the game and boosts the Skyward Blade's proc with Super Conduct. This was really one of the most fun and synergistic teams I've ever seen, but I still consider it a meme team and it has some insanely high energy requirements that make me not really want to ever recommend it. And in case you're wondering, changing your combo from 3 normal skill to 2 normal skill is definitely a damage gain. A skill cast above 100% bond is the most damage you can get and is a guaranteed aggravate reaction since it's 3 separate hits. Of course the problem is having enough healing, as it might not be worth it for a given team. And you need a lot of healing and as often as she attacks. If you're wondering what the exact amount of healing that you need is, it's going to be around 5.4 thousand, depending on your exact total HP. But now you need the correct timing and be quick on your fingers as you don't want to delay your attacks because of it. It's very clunky and barely worth it, but some teams can achieve it naturally, especially when Furina is there. One bad news I'm always sorry to give out is when I discover anything related to FPS or ping, since I know many players just can't do much about it. And Bond of Life seems to be affected by your ping. As you can see, if I play on the Asia server, I get 250 MS. And here I'm performing my normal combo with 3 normals as fast as I would on my European account. And I'm unfortunately getting a level 2 skill trigger very, very consistently, which is pretty bad. This makes me believe that the Bond of Life is assigned server side even if the indication on your HP bar is assigned client side. Meaning that your device adds the Bond of Life, but internally it waits for the server to confirm it. So when I actually press my skill, the server hasn't confirmed yet that I have 100% Bond of Life. And this means that I end up getting a lower damage multiplier, lower hit count and lower healing. Even if I'm doing my combo correctly. How do we fix this? The only way would be to delay your skill activation and do your 3 normals, wait a split second and then use it. Or another way could be to go up to 4 attacks for every skill. I would say the higher your ping, the better doing 4 normals into skill is going to be. Below 200 ms it's probably better to just wait and still do N3E. If you want to test it and you are unsure if your combo is working correctly or not, just know that the easiest way to spot a correct 100% bond of life skill cast is to see 3 damage hits and this animation that reminds of a splash art. By the way, your device's FPS has a similar problem. You will be casting a little less attacks overall if they are very low, like 30, 45. If your device is able to run 120 FPS instead, you will simply do more hits. I think that's the case on iPad Pro. It's just the way the game works and it happens to many other characters as well. And to finish, a few rapid fire tips. Attack Sense is basically always better than Elemental Mastery unless you are in a danger team and Hydro is also included, but it still depends. You can spam their skill to move around and kind of climb. Certain teams can overcap her Ascension 1 with attack buffs and sometimes even a Bennett alone can. But building more attack, especially without Dendro, it's totally fine. Attack speed can be used and it's beneficial to her but doesn't change her combo. It just enables more repetitions. Her Sword Dash attack is a skill that does no more attack damage. It does not trigger Zinchu's coordinated attacks, for example, but does trigger Beidou's ones. That's because Beidou is activated by normal attack damage, and not the action of attacking. C6 Chlorant with Beidou or Zinchu is literally immune to damage. Like, actually, she does not take damage. As always, I will put links in the description for more info or resources, and if you have any doubt on Chlorant, let me know in the comment section. Like or sub if you enjoyed, and see you in the next video or during the livestreams.